everybody. Hi. Hi. So we've been, um, I've, as you guys have known, we're here, we're asking my mom awesome questions, and we, we've been talking about autism to get catch it up. So we're talking about autism because it's very close to my mom's heart and important. In this house. In this house especially, yes. Yeah. Um, but also just as something to talk about and open up and... Yeah. We... Uh, Continue. Yeah. So my next question for you is why is it hard for people with autism to communicate? Uh, again, I can only speak for myself. Exactly. We're always here. We're speaking from our own personal experience. Everyone's experiences are valid. Yes. And, and different. Okay. So here's mine. There is a bunch of different little things going on in my head and I'm examining them and I'm learning them over and over while I do menial things. Mm -hmm. I thought about this answer. Yeah. I, 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 that's why you gave them before. Uh, and, and being distracted <clears throat> makes me lose all the things I'm thinking about all at once. And it's tremendously frustrating to try to turn this entire like concert that's going on in my head around and, and then just talk about if the dryer is unloaded or not. Mm -hmm. it, it, it just, I cannot. It's very difficult. I, I have to stop, regroup, answer, yeah. and then start rebuilding what I was thinking about. And it goes on continually. It never stops. Mm -hmm. Like, I have, like, four things I'm thinking about always. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> What are your four things right now? <laughs> I'm not going to tell you because that will make me drop what I'm talking about right now and then I'll forget. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. So I get nervous even saying it because in my head, what I communicate makes sense. And in life, when I say um, what it makes little sense to others mm -hmm. without time and effort. And sometimes it's an immense effort. So except for nail art and animals, I don't have to pretend or mimic with nail art or animals yeah. or if I'm alone by myself. Mm -hmm. I can just be myself. If I'm with animals or doing nail art because I'm just focused, so hyper-focused on one little area yeah. and listening to stories that it's just perfect. So, Yeah, and we <coughs> actually just went through some old pictures the other day oh. and we found so many pictures of you holding animals. Right? Know, yeah. Especially when you were little. It's so sweet. I saw this picture of you as a little kid. Uh huh. And I remember that, that little kid we were in the classroom with, and you're like, that reminds me of me. Yes. I see it exactly. Oh. Mm -hmm. I see the same look in her face. I'm like, yep. That's her. Yep. That's her. And to a T. And now I see her walking out of the hall, and I'm like, mm hmm. Are you good at drawing? <laughs> oh my god. Let's find out. Yeah, she's a little sweetheart, her little face. I was like, oh, I know that look. What are you thinking Just about? Drifting through the world. <laughs> We're in a wind, whole different room where the wind takes her. <laughs> yep. Wind well, myself. you to to go on to kind of like go on with what you were saying about it just being difficult to communicate and being overwhelmed by the amount of things you have on your mind. Yeah. And how that can be really draining. Um, in at times. Yeah. One of the things that we do here in the house is we communicate with spoons. Yes. I know that that's really common for like. For people who are neurodivergent, uh -huh. um, but for viewers who don't know, show them how the spoons is like. Say you wake up and you have ten spoons, and you're spending your spoons throughout the day. That's like your energy level. And so, like, if I wake up with ten spoons, I, you know, we want to do something. Her. Yeah, you would ask me how many spoons do you have, and if I'm like, I have two spoons, like I am almost done. They're like, okay, maybe later, maybe later when you have like five extra spoons. Well, yeah. Do we whatever. assess the spoons before we, we uh, commit. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Because there are some people that wake up with all their spoons and spend them throughout the day. And there are some people who wake up with no spoons and get spoons from their interactions with other people. Yeah. And so it's just like, how many spoons do you have? It just, it makes it way easier. It, it takes, it makes it not personal. You're right, it isn't. Yeah. Okay. So just for, that's fun. I enjoy yeah. the spoon, our, our spoon system. Me too. And you were talking earlier about um, humor and just like not your, your humor being a little bit different. Oh, my humor so is like, very different. Does this mean you don't get irony or sarcasm? Right. Like, how do those land? <laughs> well, <laughs> it is my own sarcasm and my own irony. Uh huh. That most people who I have known that are, that are autistic, they all get it. Right. Being in a room full of autistic people gives me spoons. Completely. 
you feel that's why I like to do the coding the coding conventions oh yeah yeah I come back all energized ready to (laughs) ready to start crap with everybody in the house (laughs) yeah and um 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 most people that that just look confused around me I, I don't get it yeah just kind of go on. I misread the room all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so I just say, sh- I just shut up and speak out when I need, when I have something to say. That's all you can do. Right. Just speak your own truth from yourself. Right. Yeah. There are, there are people that are extremely sarcastic. Yeah. My, my brother. Yeah. Yeah. Very dry. I get, I get his sarcasm because I grew up with it. And uh-huh. so when I see it in others, I get it. And, uh-huh. and it, it's funny to me, but I don't know if everybody does or if he's, you know what I mean? I can't tell who's what. Dude, he, yeah. he cracks you up. Yeah. Oh he man. He cracks me up. He makes me scream laugh scream, all the time. Scream laugh. It's, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Aw. <laughs> this you, is a funny answer. Go on. Um, the next one. Yeah. Yeah. So, so <laughs> is it? One of the common questions is, revolves around eye contact. Uh-huh. And so is it hard for you to make eye contact with um, having autism? <laughs> when I read that, I read it as, why is it hard for you to make eye contact? Why? <laughs> and I thought, and I thought in my head, I did not hit her. I did not. Oh, hey, Mark. <laughs> oh, hey, Mark. Oh, and then I said that for an hour. I did not hit her. I did not. I did not. <laughs> oh, hey, Mark. Oh, hey, Mark. Name that movie. That's a, that's a mimic of a movie. Yep. And then it played in my head for an hour. For Thank an you. Hour. Thank well, you for that. Well, that's... And, and I can tell details, but I don't think anyone cares. So I'm going to keep my autistic instrument song to myself. <laughs> to me, that was funny. I see it. See the, the humor? Yeah. The humor? That, that was funny to me. Amazing. Oh, hey, Mark. Oh, hey, Mark. <clears throat> okay, so anyone who wants to look at someone in the eye when they are that off the mark. Okay, I feel held, held captive and forced to mimic average dalliances when I look at eyes knowing that I clearly misread the room 90% of the time. No. <laughs> I prefer to look at color and control my sensories. Yeah. Absolutely. It's just overwhelming. Yeah. I can stare at a color forever. I can uh, I can mask eye contact very well, but when I do, I am not hearing what anyone says. If I'm looking at you in the eye uh-huh. and pretending to make eye contact or whatever, I'm not paying attention. I have heard that so many times. Yeah, I don't yeah. pay attention. I'm like, all right. We're making huh. eye, to- eye contact right now. Oh, and, hey, and no- Mark. And nobody, and <laughs> nobody's home. <laughs> She's not gonna remember what we talked about. Oh, hey, Mark. <laughs> They're fake. Okay, so anyways, when I'm looking, this is what happened because I've, I've really thought about your questions. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Their face overtakes their voice and my senses, and I try to agree my way out of eye contact and get all of my senses out of there. Like, like, uh-huh. so, so that your face will over overtake what I am hearing. Mm-hmm. Like the color overtakes your sound. Mm-hmm. And it's just it's just the configuration of the five senses. And yeah. it's all wacky. And I didn't realize how skewed mine were compared to other people until later in life. Mm-hmm. Boom. Mm-hmm. So. And it makes a lot of sense because one of the my, one of my questions is, can you read facial expressions? Yes. And I kind of I, I obviously know you very well, so I kind of know a lot of the answers to these. But like I know, like in the grocery store. Like, even when I'm with you in the grocery store and I'm walking up to you, if I was in a different aisle, like, you don't recognize me. No, right <laughs> never. Right. So it's like, it's kind of silly. Like, you can't you, do you recognize facial expressions? Like, you don't even recognize your daughter in the store. Right. I do not recognize nice faces. Right. But it's so interesting that you can paint one perfectly. Right. It, it all, does it, does it like, is it all in shapes and pieces and you put them together? Well, yeah. Yeah. But it's more pointillism. Mm-hmm. It's more like like tea glaze that we talk about. There's mm-hmm. so many things we need to talk about. Mm-hmm. But it's like a pointillism. And some people just have different colors that are in, unusual. And if they have a different unusual color or a certain gait, then I'll recognize them way faster than if it's somebody who shares the same color with lots of people. Mm-hmm. It takes a while for it to come out. It's like washes. And then I'll be like, oh, it's them. And then when I do that, then everybody's like, what? And then you're so weird. 